welcome back to the thrilling conclusion of the space show show episode oh, 41 uh, it's the conclusion of episode 41 we're now in episode 42 uh welcome back aboard the space show show i'm your host lieutenant commander rebecca frost joined as always by carrie jackson at carrie jackson uh <laughs> commander robert neal and bob pickard bob pickard <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh Farm supply supplier for the Pickard family. <laughs> um, we have a thrilling episode for you today as we conclude the cliffhanger from season three, Best of Both Worlds, part two. Uh, we will also talk about the these other episodes, Family, Brothers, Suddenly Human, and Remember Me. Um, interesting episodes, kind of different, I think, than what we're used to from mm -hmm. Star Trek. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Best of Both Worlds Part 2. Having absorbed Captain Picard and his knowledge, the Borg head for Earth, leaving Riker and the Enterprise desperate for an unanticipated way to defeat them. Uh, a, I, one of my favorite ways to describe things that I really like is a, a, a real butt clencher. And Best of Both Worlds <laughs> Part 1 and 2 were real butt clencher episodes. So, uh, uh, having absorbed Captain Picard for his knowledge, the Borg are on their way to Earth. The Enterprise is still tending to its warp drives and is unable to pursue. It will take 8 to 12 hours for the Enterprise to be repaired and to resume the pursuit of the Borg ship. I have a question here, just right out the gate. The Borg are on their way to Earth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> um, and they're getting there so, so fast. Mm -hmm. um, we were told it would take six days for assistance to arrive for the enterprise to to head on take on the borg ship um but but it seems the enterprise seems to follow the borg ship pretty quickly as well so what's the deal there hand wave him it was six days for a support ship to get to where the enterprise was fighting the borg from where they were not necessarily coming from earth but wherever the closest one was Sure, but what? But one would think there would be a, a support ship. I think least. they were all massing at Wolf three five nine, and there wasn't anything available that that's was true. less than six hours yeah, away. That's true. The, okay. the, the ship was going down at Wolf three five nine, so maybe everybody a real was there. star constellation, by the way, a red <laughs> dwarf system. Oh, so Hansen, who we met in the previous episode, has assembled a fleet of forty ships that intercept point Wolf. <laughs> Should have got forty more. <laughs> Klingons are sending in their ships too. Hansen promotes Riker to captain of the Enterprise as Picard is declared a uh, casualty of war. Ooh. And I messaged you guys this, but I was having my own personal flashbacks to this is exactly how I got on Geek Show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. And not necessarily. A, I wanted the promotion, um, but not like this. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, Meanwhile, Picard is surgically altered to assimilate into the Borg Collective. The procedure is extremely painful, but Picard can only manage a tear rolling down his face, indicating that somewhere in there, Picard a, is still alive. He put a drill through his head. Yeah. I mean, gotta get the Borg stuff in there. Gotta get the Borg <laughs> stuff in there. <laughs> um, the fleet at uh, Wolf 359, totally destroyed. Borg. Well, that's what you get for... <sighs> getting Excalibur class ships in there. <laughs> so ships are 80 years old. I'm oh, they about Wolf 359. They uh they really really went to town with the uh refit on the VFX on that. Yeah. Cuz I remember I remember the original viewing of that and going, "Well, that's some broken spaceships, but they when they redid the effects, they they were like, "Well, let's really make it look like 40 ships blew up here." Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, and there's there as they're looking at the just the Enterprise arrives and they see the destruction and you're already just like oh, oh man, that sucks, doesn't it? And then Shelby's <laughs> listing off all the ships that are there and names the Melbourne and Riker's and like get a on Riker <laughs> and I'm like whoa, that's the bullet there, man. Dash. How did I know not to take that command? Hmm. Um. I'm Riker the luckiest and... boy in the universe. I don't think so. <laughs> Riker selects Shelby as first officer, despite the earlier differences. It's obvious she is the best choice for the job. I I love her. I wanted I, more of her. 
Anyway. I think she was fantastic. Beverly suggests introducing destructive nanites on the Borg ship to decimate it, but it will take oh. three weeks to make it work. You remember what, that time that Wesley did that to us? <laughs> remember my <laughs> terrible so, son? <laughs> so here's the thing. We beam Wesley over right around nap time with some nanites in a container. And then when he falls asleep, he'll have accidentally left the nanite container open. No more Borg. Everything's fixed. All like because it. of sleepy the time, end. Wes. I like Here's it. Here's the thing about Star Trek. <laughs> There's no bad ideas. And I love that because mm -hmm. of Star Trek. I love Star Trek. There's no bad ideas. Are they going to do it? No. But thank you for trying, Beverly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Riker goes to sit in, in his new captain's office. Uh, and Guinan meets, meets up with him. And I suddenly um, find myself needing to know a lot more about Guinan and Picard's relationship. Well, I've because... got good news for you. <laughs> you never <laughs> will. Are you, serious? <laughs> is it, are you true or is this a blueberries? Oh, please no. retire the blueberries for God's sake, people. No, you, uh, you, you, we find out more about their relationship yeah. in, in, in Picard. She's yeah. old. Mm -hmm. She shows up in Picard. Yeah. Oh God, you guys. Oh, not only that. She shows up in she's, a movie too, kind mm -hmm. of. And and yeah. she's the inspiration for a series of Dirty Limericks by Mark Twain. Yes, that's true. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. What, what we what we know about her race is that uh, her 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 species uh, is that they live a very long time, and they can go like this and scare Q. And they can, yes. Uh, <laughs> they live a very long time, and they have some. It, it's help me with with the power uh, description. It's like an empathy. It's uh, it's the power of voodoo. <laughs> you say hoodoo, and I say power of the babe. Which, which is why she's such a good listener, you know. Yeah. It, it's, it's an empathic type of uh, mm -hmm. racial or uh, species uh, ability. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad because Peter David told us all about Guinan's people, but none of that's real. Oh, really? It's not yeah. canon? No, it's like, it's like Legends. So... Um. It's uh, Honestly, canon yeah. is whatever you want it to be, in my yep. opinion. Yep. But they are called the Al Ar El Arian, is the name El of the species. El Arian. Yeah. 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 So and, interesting. And um, we'll meet we'll meet a few of them coming up. Another mm -hmm. something <laughs> that I've I, I have noticed uh, when I'm because I'm I'm trying to remain spoiler free for everything Star Trek. Um, but because I'm on Star Trek Twitter, I can't necessarily like avoid. Business. Get off Star Trek Twitter! I can't do it. <laughs> it's where all the cool people are. You kids! I give you the <laughs> easiest solution to your problem, and you're like, I can't. Just don't. I give you the easiest solution. Just stop it. <laughs> yeah. You learn the hard way. Look, you learn you, the hard. You want to get rid of your lung way. cancer? Stop breathing. Stop it. That's right. Yeah. Um, but like a piece of information I learned. So I learn bits and pieces that, and I'm not necessarily mad that they're spoiled for me. It's more of like, a, oh, that would have been fun to find out in real time. That Adam Scott shows up in a Star Trek movie, I suppose. Yes. And anyway, that was it. Was an instance of like, oh, man, that would have been cool. That would have been cool to find out. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Guinan has a real good heart to heart with Riker. I love her so much i think she's quickly becoming one of my favorite characters and i wish i like had more of her uh anyway so guinan uh wants Riker to address the crew and shake them out of the death grip they all have on themselves right now she says that most of the crew expect to be dead in their next encounter with the borg and they're right this entire time i even last episode i was like remember they're effed they're so effed well yeah because <laughs> the enterprise d is better than an excalibur class but is it better than 40 excalibur classes no. Because, you know, one ninja versus Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee's going to punch a ninja, but 40 ninjas versus Bruce Lee? Eh. Are they duck-sized or horse-sized ninja? Uh, they're like ninja-sized ninjas. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she also tells Riker to let Picard, Picard go and think for himself, as that is the only way to beat the Borg who know everything Picard knows about the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And she's right, because Riker especially, too, he's been spending a lot of time, like, Boy, I sure wish Picard was here to make these hard decisions. And she does a really good job of snapping him out of it and making mm -hmm. him go, making him realize, hey, you are the captain now. And you need to be thinking as a captain. That's as that's what Riker. that's kind of specialty is is slapping sense into crew members and and <laughs> they'll get more juice and you'll get more of it coming up. I I love it. There's a scene coming up in a future episode here where she smacks Deanna a bit, oh. and I loved every minute of it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, the Enterprise reaches Wolf 359, 59. and the remnants 
and uh, Riker <laughs> dodged a bullet not being in the Melbourne. Uh, Riker intercepts the Borg before they reach Earth. Again, what's the time like? <laughs> what a hand wavy. It's really and why, wobbly. And why did they go out of warp when they entered the Sol system? Because they're they're like on full impulse from Saturn to Earth. Yeah. And and I was just trying to figure that one out. Is there is there something against being at full warp when you're it's when, like, when you you're know in when system? You're on a boat. There's like a no wake zone. Yeah. I wonder if there's no warp drive in in the system because it yeah, seems to me like yeah, even yeah, in yeah. even in like uh, the motion picture they uh, they waited. Yeah. yeah. Because in one zero one one zero zero one zero zero one, um, they warped out from the starbase right after they got out of the out of the uh, that's true bay that doors. Mm, mm. That is true. Yeah. But they were supposed okay. to. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a special circumstance. Maybe they're maybe they're creeping. I I I'm telling you, it's like a no wake zone when you're on a boat, and how you have to wait to get further away from. Well, the that's place. how they got to Earth so fast, is they followed the wake of the board cube. Yeah, they just rode the wake. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Riker is out there on a on a wake board. Uh, the Riker decides to. Uh, listen to Shelby's advice uh, about how they should best attack the Borg and so they separate the saucer section Shelby heads the saucer he heads the battle section he, uh, Riker assigns Data and Worf to infiltrate the Borg ship using the shuttlecraft brave boys the Borg has modified their electromagnetic fields as such that the Enterprise could not transport Data and Worf inside their ship as Riker and Shelby engage the Borg in battle Worf and Data rescue Picard who is still in Borg form from the ship uh, they do a really cool thing where, uh, you know, they start heading towards the Borg ship. Riker says, cut your power and just essentially drift. And they bait and they make it in undetected. Uh, and then they get our, they get our boy. As soon as they got him, I, on my couch, fist pumping, we got him now get out of there. <laughs> but then I remembered, oh, earth is like right oh, there though. Little thing. <laughs> Forgot. There's just yeah. a little tiny thing you cannot <laughs> leave. So the Borg resume their course to earth. The Enterprise unites as a ship again and pursues Picard now on, is now on board the Enterprise. He berates Riker, also still calling him number one. You can't do that, man. You're not allowed. <laughs> His he likeness berates... has been assimilated. <laughs> he berates Riker, saying that Picard would never endanger the ship to rescue one person. I don't know about that. He also says that the humans will be assimilated, and so will the Klingons. Data will cease to exist, as he is considered a primitive android. The Borg hmm. reached Jupiter and will reach Earth in 27 minutes, and the Enterprise is still 42 minutes away. Hey, this is episode 42. Mm. Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> I think I see a new conspiracy theory forming. <laughs> there I, we go. I love Borg Picard aboard the Enterprise. He is just chilling. Like he, yeah. he's not being threatening. At I was gonna all. say he's, he's just walking around. Yeah, he's just they're just letting him hang out, and I'm like, well, what? They, what? They figured out the way to pacify a Borg is to cut one of his pant legs off. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, pop him in, pop him in half a speedo. And we, yeah. and we just we we put him behind a gate, and he can't yeah. go outside uh, of the gate. He uh, can't it's like walk. A Roomba. You know, exactly. When Roomba, you set up the things and the Roomba can't yeah. go past it. You stop Borg and Christopher Pike that way with a gate. And babies. <laughs> oh, don't oh. make that joke oh. about Ouch. Pike. Ouch. Ouch. Ooh. Okay, Boop. so Boop. Data, I'm going to move right on from that brutal comment, Carrie. <laughs> um, data Boop. manages to hack into the Borg <laughs> via Picard. And we learn that um, that the Borg manage a link with all Borg via subspace frequencies. That's not a deficit that can be exploited <laughs> at all. <laughs> no. Ever. <laughs> yeah. It's just um, fine. But as Borg adapt, Picard fights the Borg and reaches out to Data as himself. And um, just a lovely little scene of Data, you know, trying to hack her voice I'm in into Picard's brain. And then um, before we even knew what to call him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hackers. And uh, I mean, we we're getting some some temporal tem temporal lobe activity, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, what is that? What does that mean?" And Deanna, it's him. Hey, we know our Picard is still like, there. I have a wine in this episode. 
If Picard helps Data to fight the Borg anti-hack programs and gets them to power down just before they reach Earth or destroy the Enterprise. Uh, Picard helps Data to plant a command in the Borg to suggest that it was time to regenerate. The Borg weapons and navigation subcommand systems were highly protected and could not be penetrated, but the regenerative subcommand system was a relatively low-level system and not as well guarded and hence hackable. The Borg, I'll go to sleep. Uh, Nappy time for Borgs. <laughs> which, watching the episode, you're like, yes, this rules. Reading this out loud to you now seems really silly. Mm -hmm. Because all Picard does is tell, is just say, sleep. 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 And, uh, okay, but think about it for any other... Si okay, so I'm going to go IT guy here. That is the classic, what are your vulnerabilities? Oh, we've got this really low-level system that nobody would ever bother. Mm. We're not going to worry about it. Oh crap! So I mean, it's 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 perfectly reasonable. It, like in modern society, this is a it's a career limiting move to leave that kind of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's like <laughs> long career threatening mm -hmm. move. I wonder if that's what happened to me back in October because I I went to sleep for a good long you time. Had a low level system. That's true. And a somebody was like, uh, nap time for lazy. So this this was like a giant nerve pinch. It just yeah. nerve yeah. pinched the entire board. You know. Yeah. Ta -da. So, uh, this, uh, <laughs> the Borg all go to sleep and do the malfunction. The Borg ship explodes and whoa, 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 Earth, Earth, yeah, mother effers. Uh, Picard is back. Shelby leaves the Enterprise. She will be missed. I, I will miss her. And then Riker goes back to being first officer. Although they are, uh, every, everybody acknowledges, like, Riker, you, uh, after this, you could have any ship you wanted. Also, a real most butt clenchiest moment of this episode is Riker's like Wesley or Ensign Crusher set a collision course for the Borg ship and yeah. Wesley, Wesley Riker was like, like are you serious mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the Riker maneuver <laughs> yeah Riker ram like, him yeah you heard me and <laughs> ram him and then right as Riker starts to say engage data comes on over the comm and says hold on a minute <laughs> you guys I was on the edge of my fucking seat. <laughs> like, I so, know everything was gonna be fine, Ooh, but still, I was, I was on alert. So I have a theory that cannot be unproven at all. It's that, that? Uh, that in Who Framed No, in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, there's a weasel, yes. and when he's on the wagon. He's going, "I'm gonna ram him." Entire inspiration of Will Riker. You think? <laughs> even even though that movie came out three years after Next Gen started, I'm still convinced that you know, <laughs> you right around that time. Character could be based off of Will Riker. Well, he Will hadn't Riker. started ramming ships until Roger Rabbit, and then all well, of a sudden we all they're knew like, Riker was capable of ship ramming, though. And why is his nickname Crash? <laughs> <laughs> to go to go back even further, though, Lee, in the oh. in the movie in the movie Popeye, as you recall, yeah, uh, <laughs> poop deck Pappy. That was his answer. I'm gonna ram him. Gotta ram him. So maybe it's also my answer when I have road rage. So maybe, I'm not allowed to drive anymore. So maybe maybe they got the inspiration from Poop Deck Pappy. Um, you could hope. <laughs> well, some uh, some trivia for this episode. Prior to filming, LeVar Burton had surgery, and his scenes were carefully filmed after the majority of production was concluded. This is why Ooh. he only appears in close-ups and not in the shots with uh, any of the other main characters. Most of Jordy's also, lines were given to, um, what's his name, O'Brien. Chief O'Brien. <laughs> which is going to be my thing. It's like, so why is O'Brien in the lab with Data and Doctor yeah. and Beverly? Just like, that seems like a chief engineer job. Mm -hmm. Kayaking again? Well, <laughs> he uh, will be an engineer and someday. Also, yeah. Um, I did not know this. The Lakota storyline was influenced by the uncertainty of whether Patrick Stewart would renew his contract for another season. Stewart mm. could have decided to leave the show at this point, in which case Jean-Luc Picard would have been killed off in this chapter, and the series oh. would have continued with William Riker as the captain. As the captain. Oh, but then the greatest injustice. I mean, the guy saves the Federation, right? His command... He did something that a that a admiral with forty ships couldn't do. They beat the Borg, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Well, if you want to be a commander again, that's fine." <laughs> exactly. Shelby well, Shelby think... goes from Shelby goes from lieutenant commander to full commander in one episode. Mm -hmm. And they didn't go I like, mean... "Yoink, here's your lieutenant commander pips back." I kind of yes. feel like they know. I kind of feel like Starfleet knows Riker's not going anywhere. If he wants to stay as first command as first officer for a while. Just let him do whatever. Yes, Commander Neil. So it turns out they actually wrote this because because apparently Starfleet was like, 
Picard's compromised. So There's nobody we're putting him back in the chair. Which is what I so, would have done. And, and like the 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 uh, the captain, admiral, judge, advocate, the Picard knew Philippa, whatever her name was, mm -hmm. and three other admirals pulled Riker aside for a secret meeting, and were like, "So uh, you're a captain now. This is your ship." And Riker was like, "Picard's back." And they're like, we're not putting him in the chair. He is compromised. We're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Riker said, well, that's great. I resign. And my entire bridge crew will resign. And you will have a flagship with no crew. And they're like, happened? it's an what? it's uh, apocrypha. Look in the, uh, there's an apocrypha about it where they wrote this out where okay. they determined, oh. they were like, nobody's going to understand how Riker went from captain back to commander it was okay with it and why they put picard back in the chair yeah because we, we learned in discovery you can actually have two captains on a ship <laughs> yeah yeah uh, th that's that's that was my first question at the end of this episode is how is starfleet security letting him back on the bridge he so you know the I, answer is basically Riker said there you put him go. back in the chair I will stay on the Enterprise and watch him, and if anything goes wrong, I will be there. Okay. And, so that and was he, their compromise. And then, he, and then he showed him the clip from season one, and he says, I have he a head-melting experience. <laughs> I, I can do it. Um, but that was that was their compromise for putting him back in command. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that's um, that's mind-blowing. That's some, that's, some, that's real good stuff. Mm -hmm. That's good Star Trek. That's some good Star Trek stuff. Um, and then, you know, Picard, he, you know, at the end, he seems to be fine, got his pieces all off, and then he stares out a window, and I am like, dude, you gotta get to therapy. You're like, broken. <laughs> so fast, man. There's only one thing that's gonna <laughs> fix this, John Luke Pickard, and that's a couple days at Chateau Pickard. Well, and, there, and, and here's the thing, is that this will, this will stay with the character. Yes. Forever. For the rest of his career. I mean, it's, it's it was that traumatic, and it will come up again, Borg. you know. Yeah. It, Borg TSD. Yeah. Um, so really quick before we leave this episode, yeah. um, we did a Star Trek panel um, four or five years ago at FanX, and we were talking about favorite captains and first officers. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, Cisco and Kira till I die. However, I think that one of the best first officer and captain combinations is actually Riker and Shelby. Because Riker oh. did something completely unexpected, and it's actually, to be honest, it's guided a lot of my management style, is I don't like yes men or yes women. So I want somebody who's going to challenge me, yep. not directly challenge, like, you don't deserve the job, but somebody who's like, we have a different way of trying this. Give this, give this a, an option, at least a, a chance, like Shelby did. So I think that they are one of the most underrated pairs in Starfleet. Well, and I like that too, because Riker even tells her, like, you keep me on my toes, and I like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that's killer. Like, because I, I agree, like, surrounding yourself with yes men is, mm -hmm. you're not going to really accomplish anything. You've got to have somebody who has differing views than you to, pr to provide you with other areas of, like, you know, to cover your blind spots, essentially. But it's not just different not views. Them. It's conviction in those views as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, does Shelby go right from here to yeah. second, second in command of, of the Excalibur with uh, Captain no, Calhoun? No. Didn't she go to lead off the, the uh, oh, fight against right. the Borg? That's right. She's, oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's in charge of... To Borg and, defense. and we know who she ends up working with on Borg Defense, and we know a little ship that ends up being a byproduct of that. Huh? We can't tell it's you a, because that's a ship. spoiler. Yeah, it's just the best ship. It's okay. <laughs> you know, Ever. Just, it's okay. Just the best one in Star so Trek. That's all. my big question: <laughs> is was Wolf Three Five Nine named after the by astronomy nerds who are obsessed with the actual constellation of Wolf Three Five Nine, or is it named after the second season episode of The Outer Limits called Wolf Three Five Nine because nerds like to be nerds? Um, I can tell you. One okay. Second. Thank I'm, you. I'm gonna go with Outer Limits. Probably. Nerds. <laughs> I can tell you it is do 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 that's that's trivia. that's that's the sound that she hears when she's searching the internet. That's that that's it we're in her head right now. Oh no, the internet it, 
it's, and it's oh, no, and it's, it's la cucaracha it's that's the internet's disappeared um <laughs> it's okay I, we don't need it, it. Up, yeah look it up on your own time yeah yeah uh, <laughs> that's your homework <laughs> report back for the next the spaceship show when but, you subscribe but, down what? below also add the comment okay <laughs> yeah get at us in the comments with your corrections um let's move on to the unofficial third episode in this trilogy mm -hmm. uh family after defeating the borg the crew of the enterprise experiences shore leave in various ways captain picard's return to his family's vineyard in france has some extraordinary repercussions um i didn't think i was gonna like this episode and i ended up really liking this episode oh wow not for picard's story ah um okay we'll get to it so with the enterprise right. and space dock undergoing repairs following its encounter with the borg several members of the crew have the opportunity for shore leave captain picard returns to his home village in la bar france to visit his older brother robert and sister robert. marie and Re <laughs> and nephew rene uh marie invites picard into their home while robert is very cold towards picard picard can see that nothing has changed in his village or the house where he grew up and rene his nephew wants to be a starship captain when he grows up um mm. picard's mm. initial interaction with this kid is so funny because <laughs> because we all know picard's not great with kids and um so this weird kid with the bowl cut is talking to him and he's like you don't seem so arrow arrow uh, what's the word and picard's Dynamic? like arrogant <laughs> and he's like yes you do not seem like an arrogant son of a and picard's like okay just stop talking <laughs> so uh picard hasn't been home in 20 years and he has always had a difficult relationship with his brother who considered him to be a know-it-all in fact robert calls picard an arrogant person <laughs> son of a bitch while the captain viewed his brother as a bully robert is a grape farmer and robert is conservative and doesn't like change and hates technology while picard is an adventurer who can't sit still um i also i'm so fascinated uh by birth order theory <laughs> and this just makes a ton of sense because robert is the older brother who has been essentially responsible for uh helping with upkeep of the vineyard and and the the grapes uh whereas picard i think had and this is all just me conjecturing um you know picard had more leeway to be adventurous and to you know explore more whereas robert had to start working from a very young age um picard says values can be retained while technology can enhance and make life more convenient for humans uh they talk about this while discussing uh bringing a replicator into the home because they don't have a replicator at the home mm -hmm. and uh robert says life is already too convenient and robert doesn't want picard to encourage renee to choose a life of space and technology also the mayor of the village wants to hold a parade in picard's honor and give him the keys to the city but of course <laughs> picard ever humble declines uh, Picard meets with his old friend, uh, Luis, who is a supervisor on a project aiming to raise the ocean floor and create a new continent on Earth, Project Atlantis, which is so fascinating. I want to know more about this. Mm -hmm. uh, Louis mentions that the project is looking for a new director and wants Picard to apply. And before Picard can think about it, Louis has already set up his meeting with the Board of Governors. And <laughs> there's... <laughs> There's a moment um, where Picard has a conversation with Marie, his sister-in-law. I really like the conversations that Picard has with Marie because they actually they're they're very substantive, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he's talking about how Louis had offered him this position, and Picard was like, "And you know what? I found myself thinking about it, and me at home on my couch going, my my man, what a, what a serious life shift. You must have really been through it with the Borg. <laughs> you know? He went through the shit, baby. <laughs> oh. That day, Robert taunts Picard about seeking adulation all his life. Picard protests and tries to walk away, but Robert continues to needle and insult Picard and his achievements. Robert says that Picard came back as he wanted Robert to take care of him again. And Picard calls him a bully and they start to fist fight. Um, and they have a little a little fight romp around in the mud um but then laughter turns to <laughs> tears as picard starts to cry that it, it what a baby the, the, <laughs> the boy took away everything he had and used it to kill his colleagues and friends and he couldn't do anything about it and he wasn't strong enough and again cut to me on my couch weeping uh robert <laughs> advises picard not to hide from it um 
he he advises him not to hide from it by accepting the assignment from louis um picard cancels his meeting with louis and decides to go back to the enterprise um and renee re- reminds us he wants to be a starship captain mm-hmm. one day um, but but before he he still hands louis his ideas though a, oh, about yeah. project oh, atlantis yeah. he goes i yeah, I, yeah. I came up with a few things and i noticed a couple of things in your stuff and yeah, he still hands them try over. this try and, this and louis like i need you man nobody knows what they're doing <laughs> you can have He's this like, for free <laughs> what's this thing about sacrificing a psychic child to the planet every year and he's like oh no wrong series wrong series <laughs> But uh, yeah, just that scene with them in the vineyard and just Patrick Stewart's doing some good acting here, you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just some A plus stuff. Uh, I can't can't get over it. It gives me chills, honestly, thinking about it. Just how he's like, ha ha ha! Mm-hmm. Oh my god, my life is jabbles. But this was not the story that interested you. No, it was. Now tell not. us what story Ronald D. Moore wrote that interested you. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Worf welcomes his adoptive parents, CPO Sergei and Helena Rosenko, aboard the Enterprise. Worf is still feeling the sting of his dishonor from the Klingon homeworld, and he and his parents know that he is hurting. Worf does not want the, to include them in his problem, and this hurts them more than the problem itself. And this is the story that fat that I really, really, really loved the most was Worf being so hesitant to welcome his parents on board the Enterprise. And um, the thing about we, you know, we've never met Worf's parents before, his adoptive parents before, so we don't know what to expect. And the way he's talking about them, like, oh my God, we got another low on on our hands because they <laughs> they are so excited to see where their son works, right? Like they are so mm-hmm. excited to be on the Enterprise and the, the dad, Sergei, even says he has copies of all the specs of the ship. Like he he has a, a an interest in his son's work. And Worf is like, get them off the ship as quickly as possible because I don't want them here. Because he's also he one feels embarrassed by how excited they are to see where their son where their son works. Um but also he is still feeling so I don't want to use the word embarrassed, but like disheartened and hurt because of where he is currently within Klingon culture and society, right? He's been totally dishonored. He's gone through a huge life change here. And he doesn't want his parents to be a part of that. And like this says, like they want to help their son and Worf is not accepting their love. And I, again, on my couch, Worf, just accept your parents' love, please. (laughs) Um, he drops them off at the bar and Guinan swoops in with Guinan knowledge um, who tells them that um, in his heart Worf is still a boy and they should approach him as such and so Sergei and Helena continue to spend time with Worf and eventually he admits that he is glad that they came to meet him Um, (laughs) they meet Picard on their way back and are very happy that Worf is with his family on the ship (laughs) Um, there's also another um, another sea sea story and a C plot happening here um, where Beverly, because they're at Earth, so there's a lot of stuff that they can just do here on mm-hmm. Earth. And in her storage unit or whatever, she has a box of Jack's stuff, her deceased husband, Wesley's father. And within that box of stuff is a recording that Jack made for Wesley. And I, of course, I'm like, oh my God, I am not prepared for this also because we're gonna get a lovely message from wesley's father and wesley's gonna have an emotional moment himself so she had kept this this recording in storage and now has a chance to retrieve and give it to wesley um but beverly kind of goes back and forth about whether or not she should give it to wesley and deanna says that wesley still has a lot of questions about his father and this holographic recording might help um and so she encourages beverly to share it with wesley Wesley plays it on the holodeck. I'm in tears. Episode ends. Great, fanta- fantastic, <laughs> great, great, ra- great episode. Uh, I I loved loved every second of it. I thought it was. Thanks, great. Ronald Moore. Thank you, Ronald Moore. <laughs> Bye, um, Ronald Moore. <laughs> I'm getting to the point now too, where I know enough about like directors and writers for the show. Where I was looking at, um, you know, who wrote, you know, Festival of Worlds Part One and Two, and then I saw Family was written by Ronald D. Moore, and I was like, oh baby, okay, we're in for a good one, aren't we? And yep. Did not disappoint. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's a shame he didn't write the majority of DS Nine or anything. Did he? God 
around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> David Birkin, who plays Captain Picard's nephew, Rene, would later go on to play a younger version of Captain Picard himself. This makes oh, his no. line, someday I'll be leaving for my starship too, into a coincidental foreshadowing. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And then <laughs> this piece of trivia, which means, of course, this episode was phenomenal. Gene Roddenberry was apparently not happy at the commissioning of this episode as he thought it was too much like an episode of a soap opera and lacked any science fiction element. However, showrunner Michael Piller received the backing of producer Rick Berman to go ahead and film it because he liked the way it would humanize Picard and give him some backstory after his traumatizing experience of being turned into a Borg before being rescued. <coughs> Roddenberry protested to Paramount, who at this stage was already losing patience with him and his constant interference in the show's production. Get out of here, Gene. Go. He, he had already <laughs> been banned from sets of the film franchise some years earlier after constantly complaining to the studio. After his complaints about this episode, the Paramount board decided to force the already ill Roddenberry to take a back seat and take no further part in the production process, and he died just over a year after this episode's broadcast. Mm. I, I love the pieces of trivia that are like Gene Roddenberry hates it, and that's why. And it, it's consistently one of the best things about Star Trek. <laughs> it's if Gene Roddenberry hates it, Listen, that means it's pretty good. <laughs> I've said that about Star Trek. I've said it about Star Wars. When their creators go away, you get better stuff. <laughs> you know. And and something else about Picard here, we learn. You know, it's nice seeing him from the point of view of people who knew him before he went off to space and yeah. have opinions about him. But it, mm -hmm. but it reminded me of um, the way that he keeps coming back to the Enterprise and keeps, you know, it is his life is like the song, uh, crap, just forgot it, Brandy. Um, You're a fine girl. What a, what a fine wife, wife you would, would be. be. Mm -hmm. But my life, my love for my lady is the Enterprise. <laughs> but it, it, it bear, the parallels there and getting to see how his brother calls him out for you just come home so I can fix you. But you're, you know, he knows that he's not going to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's it's something that Gene was never really familiar with. And that is, you know, uh, character development. It's a strange thing to him. Uh, so <laughs> we, also need a, we need a new villain of the yeah. week. He also he also struggled because the, the Ronald Moore desperately wanted and Pillar even wanted Star Trek to not be an episode of the week thing. They wanted exactly. it to be a continuous story, which they did manage to pull off by the third season of DS9. But this was their first time where three episodes in a row mm -hmm. were telling a continuation of the previous storyline. Mm -hmm. this, this is them dipping their toes into serialization, right? Because yep. at yeah. the end of Best of Both Worlds Part 2, Picard looking out on Earth contemplating going back home and then mm -hmm. he follows through with that in the next episode mm -hmm. highly unusual for star trek so far yeah yeah um yeah just loved um i Old did stuff. have a question this his his family home that he returns to is this the same place he goes to in picard yeah okay. yes cool just just checking um moving on to Brothers, after an accident aboard the Enterprise leaves one of its children in grave danger, Data commandeers the Enterprise, driven to take the ship to an unknown origin where an interesting figure awaits. Guys, I'm going to embarrass myself here in a little bit, um, but I'll get to it. So uh, the, <laughs> the Enterprise is en route to a medical facility to obtain urgent treatment for a child who's been injured. Two brothers, Willie and Jake Potts, were playing laser tag in the arcade. First time hearing that the Enterprise has an arcade. They have Frogger. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the last places in the universe that you can play yeah, Frogger. They, they had they had Crazy Climber, but Worf got so mad he <laughs> yeah. smashed it. Yep. Uh, Jake made Willie believe that Willie had shot him with a real laser gun. Willie got very upset and intentionally ate the fruit of a cove palm, which is extremely infectious. I don't exactly understand the scenario don't here. <laughs> Willie requires specific medical attention that they cannot treat on the Enterprise. Um, but Data inexplicably shut data gone mm -hmm. here is just android hijacks the enterprise increases the warp speed to 9.3 sets a course to an unknown destination and just sets every fail safe known to man in place oh. where no one can stop him and he's he's the guy to do it 
you know, he, he, he knows <laughs> that ship back and forth, man. There's a moment where um, we think our main crew have finally regained control of the bridge, yeah. but Data has set in place a, a security code. And as it, when he's when he initially starts listing off that code, I was like, okay, try to memorize this. And it's like 8,000 numbers long. And I'm like, there's no way these guys are going <laughs> to no. get this code. No, they're not. Two-factor authentication. These puny so, humans are not going to be able to uh, remember that stuff. Uh, Data's also, he's imitating Picard's voice, you know, in order to, which there's, this, this is the future technology. We, there's got to be a better way to detect AI voice and deep fake voice, oh, right? You would you would think the the nine different pictures pop up and say would uh, select everything with a cat on it, and Data's like, I give up. Like, oh my god! The box I... comes up that says check if you are not a robot, and he's like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't tell which one's a crosswalk. Now, <laughs> now as a motorcycle, as this is all going down. Again, my Starfleet security brain goes off, and says, if I'm Starfleet security, he's out. Yep. He's out because he and can it's be not, compromised. You not know? the first or last time he does this. And remember yeah. what I said last Space Show show about how interesting now that we have an android that's capable of going rogue and telling lies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm, yep. So, <laughs> so they drop out of warp. They've arrived at whatever planet. Data transports himself to this planet, bypassing all the security that Picard and Riker can throw at him, and finds his creator, Dr. Noonien Soong, alive and well. And mm. uh, here's where I'm going to embarrass myself, you guys. You won't be as embarrassed. I'm, as I'm watching this episode, my husband's watching it with me, and he goes, who's the regular aged man that they have in all this old age makeup? And I go, I don't know. Don't even look into it. <laughs> I'm putting together notes for this episode, and I see, oh, that's Brent <laughs> Spiner. <laughs> to be completely <laughs> fair, he was he was a last minute casting decision because they couldn't find yes. anybody to play the character. Yeah, that that's when I was putting together trivia. Brent Spiner said he Brent Spiner suggested that he play the role of Doctor Soon when the producers were having difficulties casting the role, and I go, what? Are you saying well because he it, it makes sense he would create data and lore in his own image you know yeah. personally yeah. i would have cast wallace sean but i'd cast wallace sean <laughs> inconceivable <laughs> yeah but it was so funny because the entire time dr nunez soon is on screen i'm like this guy is so annoying <laughs> i hate every little character choice he is making I don't know my brain with the Wallace Shawn thing. It's all oh, that's all I'm seeing right now. <laughs> so I have data, your data chip, <laughs> data, my boy. You might be wondering why I brought you here. <laughs> yes, this is home. an emotion chip. <sighs> all right. So, um, Willie, the brother, he's still sick and risks the entire ship with infection just from eating this one fruit. Why do they have this fruit on the Enterprise? Why do they have an android that can take everything over? What? There's so what many. Why do they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why can't a woman be more like a man? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So Data has no recollection of bring, being brought here to this planet. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Soon um, touches three points on Data to kind of reset him, after which Data is a bit like himself. Um, the doctor has activated a homing device in Data as a way of bringing him home. Um, meanwhile, Picard is able to get back on the bridge, but Data has locked all the commands with his personal override codes and 8 billion digit password. <laughs> and so the ship cannot move without Data. And this, so this kid is doomed, honestly. But what are you going to eh, do? What do we care? <laughs> we really, none of us care, really. <laughs> eat, the, eat the crappy plant. You deserve to die. Yeah, you're... <laughs> <laughs> you're just a, you're, you know, you're just a, a mechanism in this story. That's all you are, you know. So we we, we didn't care. Uh, uh, the good doctor has also disabled his communicator, so Data cannot get in touch with the Enterprise, or the Enterprise cannot get in touch with Data. Um, Data is surprised that Doctor Soong survived the colony blast, which is supposed to have killed him. The doctor says he's always had an escape plan, and Data tells uh, Doctor Soong that he joined Starfleet since it was Starfleet officers who saved him. Never uh, question me about escape plans when death's on the line. <laughs> Dr. Soong 
engages Data in conversation and realizes that Data has learned a lot more about the human psyche. Uh, he understands why humans yearn for the past while pro procreating to propel their lineage into the future. I thought this was a really interesting conversation that they have about, you know, why do mortal humans cling so fervently to the past? I thought, really great conversation. Um, but then twist in a soap opera like twist data's twin brother lore arrives oh i just thought it was a skinny pale packwood spoiler <laughs> alert did you know lore also played by brett spiner ah what really? what <laughs> the i thought it was frakes <laughs> no idea that lore had been reactivated in the homing signal intended only for data obviously called lore home as well data is not happy as lore has collaborated with the crystal entity and killed all inhabitants of the colony to gain favor from the entity meanwhile willie has 36 hours um Stupid guess what kid. i like lore i think lore is a cool <laughs> character and i want more of him i, like I want to know data. i want to i want a flashback scene of him getting that badass packlet uniform because <laughs> he talks he talks like anybody should when they're talking about the packlet such annoyance in his voice he's like yep. i was dealing with the pack lead and you can just yep. tell he's so <laughs> aggravated <laughs> you know there's at least one less pack lead and he's wearing his uniform <laughs> yeah. i was like laura i like your fit that's a good looking yeah. fit the and, and you know the pack leads were like wow he was smart he made us go <laughs> <laughs> maybe i like being naked now i don't know <laughs> meanwhile my brother's sitting in a chair <laughs> Again, Data, sit in the chair. <laughs> that should be another shirt. Add that to our collection. Riker, no, and then Data, sit in the chair. <laughs> Put on your clothes and sit in the chair. <laughs> so the reason that the doctor called Data home was to provide him with a new chip to give him emotions. Uh, Lore, of course, has his own devious plans, impersonates no. Data, uh, and soon inserts uh, the emotion chip in Lore instead of Data. Lore injures Dr. Soong and escapes. Um, meanwhile, Picard sends an away party of Riker, Jordy, and Worf to locate Data as they can't move the ship without him because don't forget, Willie is dying. Um, Riker finds Data, activates him, and Dr. Soong dies. And there's a very nice touching um, moment between Dr. Soong and Data. Again, Brett Spiner doing both parts. Don't mm -hmm. forget. Don't and forget. <laughs> Data, my boy! <laughs> And they have just like this really nice moment of Dr. Soong, he or Jada's like, hey, we can, we can get you to the ship. You'll be fine. And Dr. Soong is like, honestly, I'm good. Uh, don't you worry about me. And Jada's like, you know, I cannot grieve for you. And he's like, yeah, I know. And <laughs> watch, watch this scene. I really like the writing here. I thought it was very good. Um, Dr. Soong tells Data how to remove his memory block. Data returns to the Enterprise, activates all control. Willie's fine. End mm -hmm. of story. But now Lore is just out there with an emotions chip now. What does that mean? He's... Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. Uh, Absolutely Forget, forget nothing. that happened. Yeah. 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 No, you, know what, you know what that means? <laughs> that means there's one more American dad fan in the universe. Yes. <laughs> Because he's got emotions, he can laugh, he can enjoy. Lore, Lore, Lore will be back. Uh, and what kid wouldn't want to play with a Dr. Noonien Singh action figure? <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, kids. it's too bad that one didn't come out sooner because it could have come with a pog. It did. Hey, did come, you have that one? Is, oh, I that did. is a pog. Yeah, that is a pog right there. We had we had all of them. We Rebecca. had all of them. I Do you sold remember them all. Doctor Noonien Sung? He's back in, in pod, pod form. form. <laughs> I wanted I wanted commercials. They did Playmates commercials for the early early series, but I wanted them later, like some kid being like, "Oh, hey, here we are on the Star Trek channel for example. I'm Doctor Song. <laughs> hey." One thing I mean, we've got to give. Do you think Roddenberry's Vietnam War vet friend like? ever figured out like because because he named these characters to catch the attention of his friend from the war mm -hmm. union soon or i can't remember what, whatever but do you think do you think that ever happened do you think he was like oh my god i do remember gene roddenberry and that guy was an asshole i hope he never <laughs> finds me wow I, I would hope i would hope that was it <laughs> no i was gonna say um we've seen brent spiner do great back-to-back -back impressions with lore and data but mm -hmm. he goes full christopher reeve here in three roles in the same episode yeah yep. yeah and like keeps them all unique 
I feel, I think I was, I spent too much time during this episode being mad that there are old actors, there's old people who want to be actors and you can't find any. <laughs> and so we have this, so we just have this air quotes, random guy in old age makeup that never, ever looks good on Star Trek. But <laughs> I, I got it. I felt like such a fool. You guys <laughs> out this morning. That was Brent Spiner. <laughs> You're fine. Um, also, the dinosaur skeleton head seen in Dr. Soon's lab laboratory was rented from the Museum of Natural History. Mm. Isn't that fun? No. Um, suddenly human. On a rescue mission to an alien shipwrecked training mission, they discover one of its trainees to be a human. Um, oh, I can't wait for you to read this recap because I, I went sleepy time. Honestly, I... I, I did as well. I missed yeah. the part. I missed the part where Picard got stabbed. Well, let's because talk about I was it. so bored with this episode. Me too. Oh, because, oh my gosh! Because it was another one of them episodes, and I hated it when they did it on TOS, and I'm gonna hate it when they do it now. A group of children being annoying. Awesome. <laughs> Love it when they do that. So. The Enterprise rescues a small group of Talarian adolescents, all wearing uniforms. We it turns out that they're all humans. We don't even have. We literally don't even have to do the full recap because we don't. here's the thing. Yep. This kid, so the main annoying kid, Jono, he's human, and his parents were in Starfleet. His grandmother is still in Starfleet in an admiral, and so as a child. His family was killed. He was a he was taken in by the Talarians, and he has since grown up in Talarian culture. Super fascinating. Would love to study this kid, right? And I'm surprised. That's I'm also surprised why Picard is also like, oh, I don't, oh, no, thank you, because um, Deanna says, hey, he needs a male mentor. He's this child is sexist. The, we don't even have to go into that. This child is just sexist, mm -hmm. and. Picard, what a wonderful opportunity for you to study a, a human child who has been raised in another culture and wants to return to that culture instead of being taken away and forced back into human culture in Starfleet. But instead, Picard's like, ooh, kids? Ah. But, <laughs> yeah, but why, why try to shuffle him off on Picard when you got Reg Barkley right there? That's right. <sighs> ooh. Good I will God. be your father figure. <laughs> Put your little hand in mine. Wow. Um, there's no way Jonah would respect Barclay. Are you kidding me? That's true. <sighs> Come on. That's true. That's true. And really, the only reason he respects Picard is because he's the captain. Yeah. He's been he's yeah. been raised to respect that level of authority. Mm -hmm. Um. I would have so airlocked him. They, <laughs> yep. <laughs> we know. We, we know. They <laughs> they get in touch with uh, the Talarian captain who claims Jono as his son, and so there's a whole thing about how like, hey, you better return my son to me, and they're like, well, he's human, so we can't do that. But then as Picard spends more time with Jono playing futuristic pickleball, um, Jono <laughs> remembers <laughs> his human history and is now conflicted because he's like, well, dang. Because they also um, introduce him to his grandmother, who is an admiral in Starfleet. And he's like, oh, a woman? And she ranks higher than you, Picard? Crisis of faith here. And because he has this like whole crisis of faith where he's like, well, I don't want to leave my life as I know it, my family that I have grown up with on the Solarian society just to go back to humans. So I guess I'll just kill Picard, which um, will mean death for me. So it's death by cop, essentially, is what he's trying to do, right? <laughs> and, uh, and Picard's like, oh, listen, what you did was bad. <laughs> but... I'm not mad. I I'm get, just disappointed. I exactly. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Like, <laughs> yeah. mm, I get it. And they let him go back to to be with the Talarians. And end of story. Like, that's yeah. That's the story. You know. <laughs> um, I I do like that he was an annoying teenager. Like he had his loud Talarian music and wanted to eat his weird <laughs> Talarian food. Um, and uh. The dagger that Jono stabs Picard with is the one he received, the one that Picard received it as Worf's Chaditch in the Sins of the Father episode. Make of that what I you will. I just now realized missed opportunity here mm -hmm. because Worf has already done this ah. with Jeremy Astor. That's right. Yeah. And Worf, and, and we just saw Worf's parents two episodes back. So now we can see. Worf would, Worf would understand being from one culture, raised in another culture. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's almost like whoever wrote this episode didn't really understand Star Trek. Hmm. Is that true? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I fell asleep. I don't know. I mean, I literally I lasted yes. five minutes. So, As did I. Yeah. This, yeah. This was written by Ralph Phillips. Teleport Who? by Ralph John Phillips. Wesley and Jerry Taylor. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. So. Ralph Phillips was that little boy in the Looney Tunes cartoons with the vivid imagination. <laughs> it's true. Look it up. Mm. Right. So, so <laughs> overall, interesting concept of an episode. Yeah. But uh, we were mm. so bored by it. Like yeah. I was also super bored by this next one. Remember me, Doctor Crusher's fear of losing love also becomes real great premise. Worries create an alternate reality. Great premise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yawn fest for me. And I don't know. Maybe it's because I was already like just so sleepy. Um. <laughs> but like. I'm not, I'm not even going to read the recap for this one because essentially Wesley, once again, with his little spearmints, Ugh. messes everything up. And um, so Dr. Crusher, she's welcoming a, a mentor, her, a mentor of hers onto the Enterprise, Dr. Dalen Quace. And, um, and he's old and has some cool, he has some cool things to say. I really like all of his lines, very limited time, but I liked them. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, Jordy and Wesley are doing some kind of experiment, and there's a big flash of light, and suddenly people are disappearing from the Enterprise, and Beverly is the only sane one on the ship. And at first, it this episode does a thing that I love that Star Trek does, where something's amiss, I can't explain it, mm -hmm. but we believe you anyway, right? Yeah. Like something is wrong, that's okay. We're going, we're going to try our best to investigate it we're not going to automatically assume that you're crazy especially it's so nice to see a woman being like hey something wrong and then all the men in charge being like okay we believe you mm -hmm. what a concept <laughs> um are you sure it's not hormones are you sure you're not on your period <laughs> yeah um, are you sure you're not on that icky thing we don't like to think about <laughs> But then um, more and more people keep disappearing from the Enterprise. Oh, so, so her mentor disappears, right? And there's zero record of him. And going on, more and more people disappear. And there's no record of these people. And um, everybody's fine with it. And so, like, Picard is like, yeah, there's only, like, five people working on the ship. What do you mean there's always more people? And Beverly's like, what are you talking about? That's insane. <laughs> Nobody seems to think this is fine. Um. As I was watching this, two 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 things. First of all, I enjoyed seeing Beverly trying to solve a problem on her own. That was fun. That yeah. was cool. Uh, secondly, as I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, "Is this what Alzheimer's is like?" Mm. I did as I was you know? watching this. I was like, "Oh my god, this is like." Because everybody around you is just saying, "No, that's not." what's happening but wow okay <laughs> i did i did have that thought watching this episode yeah. like oh my god this is like the Sarek episode all over again just a little bit more on the nose mm -hmm. um eventually everybody disappears and she's the only one on the ship and she's heading to tal alpha c and then the enterprise is like that place doesn't exist either and she's like okay what the ass and there's like a vortex mm -hmm. and it turns out on the other side of the vortex um Everybody's there. It is fine. And it turns out Beverly herself is trapped in this little bubble. So she's what? Like, she, she pieces together. Oh my God, I'm in the bubble. I got to get out of the bubble. Um, and uh, a friendly reappearance from our friend, the Traveler. Oh, hi. They, they kept hi, everyone. him throughout the episode. <laughs> I have an action figure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they kept mentioning him throughout the episode. And I was like, I just kept thinking, oh, it's just some metaphorical traveler. But then he shows up, and I'm like, oh, this guy. That we guy. know this guy. Yeah. It's old Nosebrow Ridge guy. <laughs> it's old Nosebrow. Uh, so he helps, and Beverly gets back, and hooray. Ta -da. Will it make you feel any better to know that they, they redo this episode kind of on Deep Space Nine and do it much better? Oh, do they? Yeah, it's just a better show. <laughs> <laughs> um. Gates McFadden did all of her stunts for the vortex effect sequences. Shortly after performing the stunt where she is thrown from Data's ops console chair, Gates McFadden learned she was pregnant. So she wasn't on her period. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well planned. Yeah. Does this mean I'm going to have a little brother or sister, Mom? <laughs> and I will name him Jack. And can I experiment on him too? Yes. Oh 
That's my um, Kate McFadden impersonation. That's very good. It's infallible. That's good. Oh my yeah. god! It's like I she's in the to, room with us. I used to call for a takeout in that voice, and people always be like, <laughs> "Whoa, Kate we'll McFadden? We'll wow. charge you to your account, Miss McFadden." <laughs> and you're like, "Excellent, excellent." Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Star Trek. That's Star Trek this week. What do we think? Best episodes ever? Mm? <laughs> well, a few, a few of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> a couple a of them are pretty good. Yeah. I um, I always think about the, f the we first heard the term bottle show uh, in the, the late 80s when we were obsessively researching the original series and they would talk about how when they had an expensive effects heavy show they would do bottle shows and how next gen was a victim of that as well and I feel like mm -hmm. after best of both worlds and then family they were like yeah we need some bottle shows we need some shows where you know the most we have to do you think about what's the ultimate bottle show is an episode with by the end of the episode it's just Beverly yeah yeah <laughs> on the set right and so. it's and it's just the set yeah I yeah the and, and you'll and you'll see it later when uh the episode i like to call why is picard trapped in an elevator with annoying children oh god again <laughs> yeah i forgot about that one <laughs> I feel so oh, bad. let me remind you Fera Jaca, Fera no, no, Jaca. no 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 no, 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 no. Don't spoil anything for me Lee. oh I no feel, i'm trying to save you <laughs> i feel so bad for the episodes that feature stories involving kids and parents and parenting because i i immediately poo poo them because i have zero interest in that myself and i don't i feel like i don't really give it a fair shot so i try i try i do try but i just want to apologize in advance for um having zero interest in them going in you know <laughs> and it's, it's wild because i think i think ds9 is the last with kids is Enterprise, no, Enterprise, Voyager. Voyager, Voyager, Naomi, Naomi Wildman. There's a kid on Voyager. Oh, Le uh, oh later seasons. <laughs> oh, right. see, I fell asleep and also, after what about episode seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Prodigy's second. all kids. Yeah, Prodigy's just well, kids. and Prodigy was. I, I found every character on Prodigy annoying until like episode six, and then all <laughs> yeah, of a sudden I was right. like, and then all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> yes. So, oh. yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, yeah. really got into um, prodigy <laughs> i actually like those kids yeah yeah next week we will talk about oh i forgot even to mention this is a dumb joke and it's really only for me the end of remember remember me ends with robert pattinson staring out the window of a world trade center on september 11th 2001. that joke is just for me um, it, it was a, just for you there's yeah. a movie there's a movie called remember me starring robert pattinson uh, and okay. it's a it's a rom it's a romance movie and it takes the wildest leap out of nowhere right at the very end where robert pattinson's accepting a job i think he's accepting a job but he's in the world trade tower on september 11th 2001. oh movie ends and it's up to you to piece together what happens wow okay <laughs> i'm i'm just i'm upset because i just literally as you were talking found a uh darmok based meme that somehow manages to quote dune while still being darmok and we can't yes. talk about it until next season oh yes i, I saw okay. that earlier okay. yeah <laughs> so darmok is coming in season five rebecca and it's going to be just like yesterday's enterprise and that i'm not going to shut up about it yeah um, also i sent um this tweet that i saw to our little um star trek star trek chat where uh today is april 4th when we are recording mm -hmm. and um somebody said don't forget to forget to leave out tequila and classic rock music for zeph from cochran tonight because april 5th to 2063 he invents the warp drive engine yes um, and i was like i bet this is funny and robert was like it is it, it is, is. <laughs> you'll see it is because not you'll only see. not only does he like tequila he likes classic rock yep. um so next week we're going to talk about uh these episodes legacy reunion which is directed by jonathan frakes uh future imperfect final mission and the loss uh so you know until then we're gonna keep going where no man has gone before but a lot of men have gone before thanks everybody